Look out, footy's back. G'day, I'm Glenn Jakovic. Wait, am I? No, I'm not. I'm James Clevis. This is the AFL Today Show. It is the Thursday night teams, boys, show. And we are here to make footy a little bit more fun, aren't we? I'll tell you what, I am joined by local weirdos. Full-blown footy enough. Some would call them AFL experts. Some would. I don't know who they are, but some would. Over there, it's social guy Leo. What's going on, Leo? Yeah, AFL expert Leo checking in. <laughs> yeah. Checks out. I, I think, yeah, the only people that call us experts are ourselves and our mums. And that is the man. He's <laughs> four- your mum. <laughs> your your, 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 oh, that's a bit harsh. Karen. Yeah. I mean, she made you. You're four foot two with an attitude. Four <laughs> Why is foot this two a thing on every attitude. episode? Now? Four foot two with an oh. attitude. It's the stats boy, Lee McGallion. Remind me to never look at your TikTok because uh, that's just very cringe. That's not good. What? It's all right. He's making TikToks like this now. Mine is big red beard and a prick. <laughs> big oh, red beard and a prick. Oh, he's doing there we good. go. Now he's got it. Yeah. All right. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can see all the good stuff all throughout the week. All our shorts. We did a bunch of them. Some of them were absolute shockers this week. I'll tell you what. That's, so what, that's like, the fun of it. Content is content. Yeah. It is. Uh, the <laughs> AFL Today Show on, across all the socials, wherever you get your podcasts, of course. Now, 40 years back. This is round 19, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. I use that loosely. Uh, 19 rounds. This is just a moment in time where you're like, oh, this is where the rubber hits the road, you see? A little sad, eight, Jim? Eight points. No, nah, it's still finals. Eight points separate two through 13. Yep. So almost Crazy. every game feels like an eight-point game. I love that phrase. <laughs> oh, the old eight-point game. So let's start with some news before we get into the teams and all the game previews for round 19. Now, five matches this week are being between actually finals contenders, which is pretty awesome, fun. Yeah. Mm. Which... For all the talk, and I was really, really hoping we'd be able to like not focus on umpiring and gear like that oh, no. on this show. And then Charlie Cameron oh. goes from three weeks out to zero. How do you go from three to zero? Because <laughs> he's such a good bloke, stats boy. <laughs> what the hell? It's back. The good bloke rule is back. I think, I think the right decision was made in the end, but it's just embarrassing by the it's... AFL that, that they've gone from three, gone, this is really bad, yeah. bad for the game. He clearly should have done better. Oh, uh, don't worry about it. It's zero. like they want to be laughed at. I know. Like, what are they doing? They, so, want, they want Jim to talk about him on our show. It is weird that Andrew Gill and Dylan just like, Jim, talk about the umpires more, would you? <laughs> yeah. Talk about more tribunal gears, bro. Come on, what are you doing? Uh, he does sound like that. That's yeah. exactly how he sounds like, <laughs> and not just like a boring nerd. Uh, but otherwise, uh, the point was, Zeitz was tweeting out, basically, it's been successful after the tribunal made an error of law. The reasons were... What? The decision of the tribunal really revolved around the AFL tribunal guidelines, you see. It had a particular emphasis, emphasis, putting the emphasis, emphasis on the wrong syllable. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, basically <laughs> about rough conduct and sub rule three. Okay. Basically dealing with dangerous tackles and like essentially all the factors that they're sort of basically, essentially the unreasonable mm. aspect of this. Yeah. And this was a massive thing in the media today about what would a reasonable person do in those circumstances. And you're like, yeah, try to just tackle. Yeah, yeah like, it was an it was an accident. Like, what are we what are you talking about? And so they've basically just gone the rough conduct, uh, the rough conduct, and like the way that it's explained wasn't correct. And Charlie Cameron basically got off in a technicality. It kind of feels but like what, so, they didn't go through this, half of this stuff on when was it Tuesday? They're just saying like their rules weren't explained. Probably. Yeah, like it just seems like a lot of jargon. It, I don't really know what to expect. They'll anymore. never like, admit that they were fully wrong as well. The AFL. They're like, oh, we just. <laughs> There was just yeah, a few we'll things in the off. rules. We'll, we'll, we'll just tick it off, and we got the right decision in the end. Like, oh, come on. What are they doing? I think the worst part about it is simply that Charlie Cameron goes from three weeks. Like, is he culpable in any way, shape, or form? Yes or no? No. Right? No, it was an accident. Yeah. Then Clearly. it's okay. Then how do we get to three weeks? Oh, he had a concussion. So Michael Christian's just like, he had a concussion. You're rubbed out for three weeks. Like, just leave it be them. Like, that's it then. If that was the rule, then everyone would be like, okay, whatever. But not be like, oh, actually, well, you've got to do this. And if you're a reasonable bloke, you do these things. And then it's actually, oh, we've screwed this up, zero. So, Jimmy, what are you doing? Do we have to bring back the year? Nah, is he a good bloke? Is he a good bloke? I think on on Wednesday, you're like, nah, he's not. Now he is. He's back to being a good bloke. Well, if he wasn't culpable in the first place, he was always a good bloke. Yeah, but. Yeah, three weeks on your on your record, but not zero now, so it's all good. So on top of that as well, yesterday the AFL, very late yesterday, the AF, AFLPA, they're a branch of the CSIRO, CIA, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's guys in it, yeah, yeah NCAA, uh, the MRO. <laughs> yeah. uh, they came out, and went, uh, what's going on? We don't know what a tackle is and isn't, and neither do our players. It's a very good point is by that the AFL. The one Dangerfield. Dangerfield's the head of that, yeah, and, and a few other big names. That's essentially that. Like this is a very, very, very interesting point for a kind of 
you know, wonky reasons. Because AFLPA doesn't often come out and criticise no. results. They're usually very the tribunal. popular, They're very, just very like supportive. supportive. It's yeah. like, you're doing a great job, AFL. Please give us money. Like, yeah. That's how it goes, right? That's what yeah. happens. So they came out and were like, oh, it seems unclear as to what a proper tackle is and isn't. It's a fair point. Uh, and everyone went, yeah, we're all yeah. confused. Yep. And today's result of Charlie Cameron being given zero We're weeks, still confused. I think we're all still a bit confused. <laughs> yeah. Hey, cool, though. The footy's going to be awesome this week. <laughs> Can we just talk about, like, the Dockers having to, like, take dumps in, like, in, the, in the basin. In the basin. In the That's what it says on the post. A good friend of Stats Boys, Dan Churney, was out there talking oh, about it? how funny it is that uh, 610 blokes, it must make them easy to pee in the basin. Uh, <laughs> That's a good point, by Dan. Yeah. Good point. To be honest, though, I mean, six foot ten, probably. It probably does make it's it not, easy to pee Is there in anyone the in, from where that's six foot ten other than Luke Jackson, other than Jackson and Darcy? Like, uh, probably not. No. Probably. Giant Miss and uh, Josh Treacy are pretty tall. Yeah. I don't think they're six ten. No. Uh, I also, I have never been on a private jet. I'm not a PJ kind of guy. Is I, I, I am. <laughs> I'm much more. I try to keep it relatable. You know? Oh, you're a common man. Down with the fans. I am. Yeah, I'm just. Like, I'm just. I'm just like you. I'm a normal yeah. person. <laughs> I'm just like I'm you. Flying, you know, <laughs> economy always. Jeez. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to flying to He's life. like Pat Cummins, just for the environment. Going yeah. to Noosa and having to like, sit a rambunctious two-year-old in your lap for a couple of hours, that's going to suck. <laughs> it's like, can we just book him a flight, like a seat? This sucks. Do you met Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, rambunctious I'm coming, yes. <laughs> uh, Point being, the Dockers fly at home from Tassie last week, uh, ran out of water. Yeah. And this all came out, you're like, oh, that sounds horrible. And they've got the longest trip in the AFL as well, four and a half hours, half an hour in. So they had four hours with no functioning toilets, no water. The, uh, yeah, the basins were being used for things, unspeakable things. Yeah. It wasn't good. The panic that would set in if you've had a couple of beers yeah. and you're like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I need to go to the oh. <laughs> Would they open? Give me a rubbish bag. If the basin gets I'll full, out. Can, you, can you just open the emergency door and just go out, out there maybe? Well, I always well, find the basin get full. <laughs> I don't know. Some, uh, someone clogs it up with something else. <laughs> <laughs> Stats was out there waffle stopping the <laughs> stopping the. I didn't want to say that. Who in Freo would have done that? Oh, hundred percent. Luke Jackson. Jai and Miss would have been half asleep doing something like that. Luke Ryan. Nah, no, Luke Ryan was Luke asleep. Ryan. You reckon for most of it? <laughs> Which is probably the best way to deal with this. Like try just try to knock yourself out with like four beers and like an Ambien or something, and away you go. Yeah. Right. Don't try that at home. Kids. <laughs> the the vibe being just like just try to sleep through it. Right. Yeah. 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 It's how I approach being a dad. Just try to sleep, try to sleep through it. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> She'll be right. But it sounds like – it sounds horrible. And yeah. I think dealing with this, I think it's it still boggles my mind. So the AFL chartered them a flight because they couldn't get a flight from Frio to Launceston. In a surprise twist, there's not that many direct no, flights no. from Frio. No, no one's doing that trip. Uh, but they've gone, all right, well, there's we can't make this work, so we'll charter a private jet for you and away we go, or a private flight. And uh, it's not like Taylor Swift's like, you know, private yeah, jet. Yeah, it's not as nice as that. And for an entire team just to suddenly just, you know, you've lost and then your dunnies just you lose again. Cock it. What are you doing? That is just. Yeah, that, oh. at least if they won, they could have been happy, but they were not happy the whole way. Just the Dockers just keep on docking. That was gross. <laughs> All right. And this just in, we've got some breaking news, boys. That was pretty good. <laughs> hey, we talked about how Charlie Cameron got off his three week suspension. So did Toby Bedford. What the hell is going, going on? You know what's going on? They use the exact same argument. I think the tribunal might be broken. I think they're it just, is broken. They're broken. There's no more tribunal. This is it. We should actually just have like, I don't know, feats of strength at this point. Just like, <laughs> that was just a you got to beat Michael Christian in an arm wrestle. I love Let's that. Go. I love that. So, Lucky McCurdy, so friend of the program, has tweeted yes. out, Toby Bedford is free to play this weekend. The Giants' appeal has been successful. The same argument as Charlie Cameron. There was no evidence given the by the tribunal in its findings that Bedford's conduct was likely to cause injury. But they could have said this, what was it, Tuesday when they had the thing? An error of law. What are they What are they doing so at AFL? so unnecessary just to go, like, you're suspended now, you're not. Because, like, I think as soon as uh, the Charlie Cameron, they were like, you know, it's gone, hang on. Yeah. I reckon what they did, they found that spot in the rule book and went, oh my God, they're right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Let's take this in with us. Why have they got English? Because they're a lawyer, son. <laughs> <laughs> they're some oh sort gosh. of pirate lawyer, of yeah. course. Uh -huh. Watch out, you mateys. Okay. Anyway, there you go. Toby Bedford, free to play for the Giants this week. Crazy. Not sure how that's going to work in team selection with the Giants and the Suns game on Saturday. 
Uh, we should actually see if he was named because when it does go to appeal, I they think do he was tend actually. to have those ones. So I didn't see – he wasn't in the outs, obviously. Right? No, he was, so, he was named, yeah. Uh, so he has been named. So we'll see what happens. What do we reckon? Does this change your sort of vibe on this? No, not really. Vets is not Unless he good, plays but... a negating role on one of the Suns wins. He has, been, he has to add a few yeah. tagging roles, hasn't he? Yeah. yeah, if he goes to Anderson. Maybe. Mm, so cool. Bedford was named on the interchange, interchange bench. So there you go. Bedford and Charlie, free Crazy. to play this week. Absolute chaos. Now back to regular programming. Anyway, let's do some game yes. previews for a pretty chaotic round 19. Mm. Because as I said, we have five games that actually happen between finals contenders this week, which is awesome because right. as I said, between 2 and 13, <laughs> eight points separate those positions on the ladder. It sets up a lot of eight-point games, as I love saying. Uh, the first one is not one of them. No, uh, no, Essendon, <laughs> ten and a half point favorites against the Crom, Adelaide. So we had a big check in with uh, Simeon Thomas Wilson on Wednesday's show, it was great. talking about the Crows, talking about where they're at, and there are. The, it's weird because there's these little peaks and troughs of this Adelaide Crow season, right? Where suddenly they feel like a little bit of optimism, and then it all falls apart horribly. Yeah. It feels like this weekend might be another one of just the it all falls apart horribly. Maybe ten and a half point. Favorites though, Essendon. Only ten and a half stats, boy. That well, blew my mind. They were horrible team. last week. Yeah. I think it, even if they sort of got a little bit closer and it's and, where we're the footy though. Where we're, Counterpoint yeah, wet still at the MCG. This is under a roof, yeah. At Marvel, they clearly yeah. don't have the players. You know what they should do? Yeah. Open the roof. Just let it rain again. Just, just let, let it Adelaide, rain. Adelaide, Adelaide. Why is that? Why is uh, Matthew Nixon on the roof? They, they keep the up. roof closed and they just have sprinklers come on. And, my entire yeah. vibe is if you are playing at Marvel, if you are the away team, I think. You should have the opportunity to choose. either choose open or close. Well, that's not home grade advantage. All right, home, all right. <laughs> if you're the home team, open or close. I love that idea. I reckon away team. I think away team. They're already traveling. No, like, I don't want that for choose. North. If, if it was against North, they'd just, if it's raining, yeah, open the roof. That'd be North amazing. Yeah, be no, open thanks. the roof. Let's do it. <laughs> uh, so the overrun is 168.5, which again, I thought was quite unders because I feel like this mm. could easily be a shootout because we've yeah. seen Adelaide at least hang with teams at points this year. Well, that Carlton game. Exactly. That was really. awesome. That was at yeah. Marvel. That was a great right? game. It was like yeah. 100 to 98. So, yeah. It's, it's, it's hilarious that that's still etched into my brain. Yeah, how did Adelaide been, beat Carlton? That, I just did. forgot about that. I'm still so angry about it. <laughs> your second, Jim. It's all right. Just remember. Your <laughs> anyway, uh, this is, however, the Draper Bowl. Yes. Yep. Cast your mind back to, what was it, like round five? It feel that long ago, really. No, nah, it was. Yeah, yeah, it was like five or six. It was a while ago. Uh, and Sam Draper saves the game by just belly flopping on it. There's a Peter Coombe song. Like a grenade. A kids, 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 kids entertainer, Peter Coombe. I love Peter Coombe when I was a kid. I met him <laughs> as an adult. He was lovely. It was hilarious. Oh, there you go. Uh, he didn't expect some of my interview questions. It was pretty fun. <laughs> it's like uh, every interview on this show. It's, he's a legend. Uh, <laughs> he has belly flop on a pizza. That's one of his songs. Oh, yeah. It's Mr. Cri uh, Clickety Kane at the end of his life. Belly flop on a pizza. Ooh. <laughs> That's what Sam Draper did in the footy. He at the end of that game, he's like, belly flop on a footy. <laughs> Loved it. That was bad. That that was obviously on the ball. It was. But and then, but it wouldn't have affected Crow season. They can't complain also, because they've been crap. had like 10 more scoring shots. Yeah, but yeah, that's footy. So Great give, us, <laughs> give us some stats. <laughs> stats <laughs> yeah, it is a draw ball. Uh, Essendon have actually beaten Adelaide seven straight times. So they'll be loving this matchup, especially when, what is it, Adelaide uh, 14th at the moment, I believe. Uh, Laird as well, he's, he's been really good. Uh, 30 plus in 13 of his last 14 games at Marvel. So he how loves many, those. How many metres gained? Uh, I, don't, I don't really care about metres gained. I think it's the most overrated stat in footy metres gained. But that's, oh, an, that's another. Uh, I think you're the most overrated. Oh, oh, here oh. we go. All right. Now, metres gained, I can't stand. I, I, don't, I don't get the hype around that. Uh, Peter Wright as well has got uh, 11 goals across his What do you 40. mean you don't get the hype around metres gained? <laughs> no, because if you wanted the footy to go one yeah, way, if you, if you have that's you've gained metres. No, but like if, if you have gained forward, minus 47 yes, metres. Exactly. Stats boy, oh. what do you think has happened? Okay, have you had a good game? Territory got... game, obviously. But then someone goes, "Oh, he's had three hundred meters gain." What does that mean? What, no one cares. It like, means he's moving the ball forward. But there's guys it means that he could be it. running with his legs. There's like Luke. Are you Ryan. related to Brad Crouch or something? No. Like, what's going on? <laughs> I think it's just. I just think it's the most overrated stat going yeah. around. It doesn't mean that much in terms of Jesus. Just, yeah. Anyway, we might have to revoke you from stats. Well, I, don't, I don't care. I just think oh, it is. Come uh, up with and then Peter Wright. Ear meters gain. Ear meters gain. Feet gain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, something else game. Uh, yeah, Peter Wright has been really good across his last four games. Had a stinker well, two dropped, weeks ago. So, yeah. Oh. He's been dropped. He's been dropped. Yeah. He got subbed out last week. Really? So there in comes Jaden Laverde. I thought I was going to talk Goldstein. Love a bit of Wait, Tolley. really? Jai Menzi. 
In ga- out goes my beloved Bricky. Apple omitted. Nick Hind, Peter Wright, two meter Peter, and Dyson Heppel has been dropped as well. Ooh. I was going to talk him up because he's had a decent month. Heppel uh, is also he's like as in they um, didn't actually list him as managed. It was just omitted, which feels like mm. a strange one because they have managed Heppel a couple of times this year. He's older, already? yeah. yeah. Uh, for the Crom, Tex has actually been managed as well. Mitch Hinge comes in, which is pretty interesting. That's I actually don't good. mind that for the Crom, but mm. Tex is also the sort of dude who can go, hey, I'm at Marvel. Check this out. I just kick four. Yeah, like nice condition. I, th- I thought he'd be, he would play well, this one. Th- they've got Himmelberg, Phil Thorpe, and Fogarty. I thought Wasn't there sure. a point where we are just going to go massive? Yeah, w- why did they play four key forwards last week? I'm just looking now. And, and the, the race. race. And, and they run. And yeah, they won. And they won. What yeah. the hell? And the Bombers were getting like trying to combat that as well, right? Mm. With Nate Caddy yes. as well as two meter Peter, as well as Langford. And they did keep Goldstein out. So, so, but they brought Goldstein back this week yeah. and kept Caddy, which is hilarious. I think so. Peter this Wright is, being out is a that's a shock. To this me. is just weird selection. Heppel omitted, like Wright omitted. Like they're going especially, for finals. Like yeah. Especially two meter Peter at Marvel, which I feel like yeah, he he's at Lopsy's record stats guy, eleven goals in four, four games. last four games. Uh he did have like Two pretty easy ones last game. <laughs> then he didn't get one goal at all the game before. But this is, it's just strange that, like, when you're what, you, fifth on the you're ladder, yeah, yeah. you're going for top eight. Yeah. It's a pretty bold selection call mm. this late. It could make or break their season, really. He averages two and a half goals at Mull. So Damn. that's pretty good for a, you want that in your team. But he hasn't been at his best. But I think that's a, that's a very yeah, they stiff. Still, they still have the tools. They've got Harrison Jones, Nate Caddy, Kyle Langford. Yeah, that's a very stiff. Gold scene one. as well with Draper. Mm. But yeah, it's just, I don't know. It's a big call to make, I think. Yeah. How about a big question then for this one? Sure. Bounce back bombers after last week's shocker. Yay, nay. Or the other big question. <laughs> Who go. dives on the ball is a bit of a piss take Ooh. if the Crows win? Oh, I, after the game. Like, yeah, after yeah, the game. After you they do win. It, right? oh, the same I, as he did. He pretended to go Who is the biggest, like, big Jordan Butts? So what? what? <laughs> big He's the most quiet guy I got. Yeah, it. but he'd just like dive on it and do like a Who, dopey little. Who's like an over. annoying like ben little Keys. forward? Ben Keys, Keys could probably do ben it. Ben Keys would do it. Yeah, he's got that vibe about him. Stick up for his mates. If Lukey Pedler was still alive, the where is Lukey Pedler? That's favorites. why they're injured. Isn't he did get injured. Bring him back. He, he can, one leg, Lukey Pedler is still the goat. <laughs> is he still a fan <laughs> favorite? It might be your goat. Yeah, I love it. Josh Rochelle could do it. That'd be pretty good, actually. Yeah. Is I mean, didn't he get a haircut as well, yes, Rochelle? Yeah. yeah, that stinks. <laughs> I, I just see some big dopey player just diving on it accidentally. Riley O'Brien. Riley O'Brien, <laughs> yeah. Riley O'Brien's big Maybe through a thought. Yeah, uh, if he be. did it, though, he'd also maybe just bash up. He'd so. also uh, break the ball if he did that. <laughs> Pop nice. the ball. Yes. Any other stats, stats, boy? Let's go quick. No, I think we've covered it all. Yeah. Well, the thing is, for me, offense and defense, the Dons, oh, despite being in the t- – this is the first time they've been in the top four since around seven mm. this year. See, these are stats that actually matter. And, well, you know, I did write them down. Yeah, I just didn't write them down. You skip but no, they're outside of the top four for the first time since around seven, yep. as I said, which is pretty crazy. They are 11th on offense, 14th in defense, and they're still in the top eight. That is That's wild, crazy. isn't it? I think the much. last and month or so is Crows yeah, are has like up. fourth fourth in defense. That's crazy. They were third a uh, couple weeks ago as well. And it does it, feel like, though, the Crows, though, every time they play at home, they just like will smash ugly, a random yeah. team. And you're like, okay. I think it just shows, though, that, again, Crows aren't in this finals conversation, and yet, a fourth in defense and bombers are fourteenth. Yep, like it's, it's so close. Mm. Paper Tigers, those bombers, or the best team in footy. You be the judge. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go the bombers by twelve. This was forty two. Now I've got a couple more questions 42. about this. Yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. I think the fact that the line is ten and a half does sort of scream out. Eh, Crows might be in this one. So I think they'll keep it close. Bombers just eke it out. What about you, Leo? I think Bombers by around three goals. I just think they'll keep them at, keep them at arm's length, especially like the GWS game at Marvel, similar to that, I reckon. Yep. Yeah, I, I think Bombers by four goals. We've seen Adelaide, especially away, they, they just crumble. So I think it'll be pretty close for three quarters. Bombers too much too quick on the off half back, and then uh, Bombers by 24. Yeah, the changes are pretty interesting. That, that's just weird, but I don't think – Maybe they're trying to try something out because they're like, oh, we can beat the Crows. Yep. But then the Crows mm. the crows bounce them when they ch- do these changes. We'll have to- I just want to see Thrill Thorpe just ragdoll some dudes. Yeah. yeah I'm happy good. that he's yeah, back in the team. All right. Saturday, GWS versus the Gold Coast. This is one of the – well, the Gold Coast, sorry, Gold Coast. Uh, can't say the in front of it. It's like the city of churches. Uh, <laughs> GWS versus Gold Coast. The Giants are 14 and a half point favorites. Interesting that it's like under three goals. You're at home. You're a team that's won a couple on the trot after a, uh, mm. a pretty harrowing kind They've been of pretty average though, yeah. Mid-season run. Mm. Caniglio was a uh, out last week and 
I believe, teams. is out this week as well. So in comes Xavier O'Halloran for him. Yep. Uh, for the Suns, Lockie Weller, David Swallow, Alex Sexton in. Out goes Roses, obviously being suspended for just the old whapang. Yeah. And Alex yeah, Davies, buy. same thing as well. And Ainsworth is actually out injured too. Bit of a tough one. Roses so. learned that from Gary Ablett Jr. Remember when he did two two in a row in that, yeah, that season? Yeah. He got a bit angry towards the end of his career. I feel like this is a pretty optimistic over under one seventy one and a half at NG. Uh, yeah. Gold Coast away from home. We've seen them average what fifty seven points a game basically, and then they'll yeah. throw this game where you're like, they scored forty eight points. What are you doing? And GWS yeah. have only sort of just got back to their firepower up front, but they're not still like scoring massive scores. So. I think the last time these two sides played, it got to over two hundred between the two, but that was at uh, Gold first. Coast. Yeah, yeah, which is home always game. high scoring. Yes. Yeah. So the Giants are sixth on offense. The yep. Suns are seventh. That's nice. <laughs> and defense, they're tied for eighth. Yeah. These teams are pretty evenly matched. What could be the line of demarcation? Mm -hmm. The 28th parallel. Exactly. The simple fact that the Gold Coast Suns are away because where have they not won this season, Stats Boy? Below the 28th parallel. That's away correct. from people's <laughs> first and Darwin. Yep. Good job. Uh, <laughs> give us some other stats, though, Stats Man. Uh, GWS have actually won 12 of the last 13 meetings. They've been pretty dominant, uh, GWS, over the last few years. Uh, 40 and 28 were the margins in the last two. So they've won pretty comfortably. Gold Coast as well, not only have they lost every away game this year, but they've failed to cover the line in their last 14 away matches. So Whatever you're tipping here, I'd be tipping over that 14 line because I know that that seems probably if this was a Gold Coast, you'd go their favourites, but GWS should be, I think, more 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 heavy favourites than 14 and a half. It seems say. like Giants have found a little bit of form. Too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they've got they got their confidence confidence back. Jesse Hogan finally kicking some goals again. Toby Green going bananas. Toby Green looking <laughs> looking like himself. So yeah, should be more. I think the line should be a bit higher. Than <coughs> Toby Green also had the uh, had to explain the uh, hostage video. <laughs> That which was, was so very, funny, yeah. Which is funny. Yeah. And so, and then you've got, you know, mouth breathers like Alex. Oh, they're best mates though. What are they doing? <laughs> it's like, yeah, we all get it. It's a joke. That's well, what jokes ever, are about. Tom, Tom Harley didn't think yeah, it was Tom Harley. Yeah, but Tom Harley's also an idiot. Yeah. Like, and then all these Swans fans were commenting on it like, oh, you you dog and all this stuff. <laughs> you dog. Yeah. <laughs> they were. They were saying, sending death threats. Yeah. <laughs> Love yeah, that. Like our cricket today. Uh, but Toby, <laughs> <What>? Toby Green <laughs> has been flying, so that's handy. Uh, and he's also not had a bad run against the Gold Coast stats, man. Yeah, Toby Green's got three plus in his last three matches against Gold Coast, so he loves playing against them. Noah Anderson as well. Although this one is away, we, we've talked that up in Supercoach and and in just in general stats that he loves dominating at home. He's had 26 plus disposals and 10 plus clearances in his last two games against GWS. Is he a barometer? Of how, if they win or not, yeah. yeah so right. if he if he if he's had a couple of good games away, though. He yes. dominated against North, uh, and we still won North, so... Oh, any any excuse to bring that up? Isn't yeah, it? yeah. Well, we don't get many wins. So. <laughs> yeah, but where was that played? So uh, I think Marvel. the barometer is what's quite literally the barometer saying, like yeah. where are you yeah. and what is the atmosphere? I think pressure. Who else is who else is a really good 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 player at home? Lacocious maybe or mm. those type of players that dominate at home and then do nothing away. So I think they're the barometers. Yeah. yeah. Well, the big question for this one is obviously quite simply: Can the Suns beat the Mystic Forces of the Twenty Eighth <laughs> Parallel? And the Giants. No, no, it's too strong. I, I think they don't, they don't even believe it anymore. They're like, oh, we'll just win at home. We'll rock up because we have to rock up to games away. We're gonna lose. We don't have any belief. Dimmer Dimmer doesn't even have belief. Dimmer wants them to grow up. Yeah. How many swears does Dimmer? Use <laughs> yeah, no, he's not allowed to. It. He said sorry to his mum. You see that? He said <laughs> sorry to his mum. Yeah. <laughs> if I swore during a press conference, my mum would be like, that was pretty good. Jim's mum listening to him. <laughs> that was imaginative. <laughs> <laughs> I like the three words that you threw in between the swears. <laughs> It was good. Uh, I'm taking GWS by four goals. Yeah, I've gone around the same. I just think they'll have too much. GWS by, I'm changing it, 31. I think they're going to win pretty comfortably. Gold Coast away, I just shambles. Uh, like this is a hilarious like just combo on the early Saturday games as well. Because mm. again, why wouldn't you have them overlapping? Because that would make way too much sense. Wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they're going to start at exactly the same time at 1.45 on Saturday. Uh, where we have St Kilda versus West Coast, these two just scream out like because you've got an the, ugly game. the expansion oh. bowl in GWS and uh, Gold Coast, yep. and then you've got St Kilda West Coast, which is still burned into my mind of like when West Coast nearly beat them uh, yes. last year, last year. Yeah. yeah, out west though, and so the Saints are twenty five and a half point favorites against the West Coast, but sorry, West Coast, not the West Coast. Uh, <laughs> I think it's fun. Marvel one forty five PM over under one sixty three point five, which again Ooh. feels very very. Hi. Yeah. Gotta go under that. High. Yeah, surely. No, well, there's actually a couple of pretty interesting changes here as well because I yes. think uh, the J train is out, isn't he, for Ooh. the 
Wiggles. He is. Yes. Jakey oh, Miller goes know. out. Yo. Out goes Yo. <laughs> Yo, Duggan, Waterman. Duggan and Brockman. <laughs> there comes out. the Eagles. I'm changing In my team. In comes Campbell Chester, Sorry, Jack no. Pritchicelli, and Josh Rotham and Jai Cully. So, have, have you seen um, there's like a stat every team's like barometer, like in terms of – who wins like the most when they're in their side? Oh. Josh Rotham is like three and five, and he's the what? most for West Coast. Really? He so he's, they're going to so, win. Is what you're saying? What I'm saying is they have like a forty percent chance of winning this okay. game. In for the Saints like comes it. my beloved Hugo Garcia. For Super Coach, got him in. Super Coach, you little ripper. I feel like Jim never traded be. anyone from his bench. <laughs> he's still got everyone. Well, I've mean, I've run out of I ran out of trades oh, that long ago. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah okay. I'll give you a boost. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> Liam Stocker, my beloved Liam Stocker, Brad Hill, and Hugo in for the Saints. Mateus Filipu. Injured. Oh, that's yeah. brutal. Four weeks. Breaks. Breaks your heart. He's been their best player. Ben Patton's been dropped and Ari Showermaker as well, which oh. stinks because you feel like against the Eagles, he could just kick six from inside the center <laughs> what? circle. Yeah, he's got a big kick. He just go have back. I know, I know. He's got the biggest kick, yeah. but he's not kicking six. He's he could, a, he'd he, be lucky to have six kicks. From inside oh. the center circle, he's kicking. Let's go. <laughs> I thought you were going to do it. I thought that's, his, gonna... that's his position is inside the center circle. Yeah, just stay there. That's Don't go out of it. Saints are fifth in defense, 15th on offense. That sounds right. The Eagles are 17th and 16th. Well, that's why I'm not going the over. You got the 15th versus the 17th offense. Gross. No, thanks. Uh, stats boy, give us some more stats. Yeah, West Coast, poor old West Coast. Uh, West Coast have lost 26 of their last 27 away games, uh, and they're one and six in their last seven at Marvel. Who predicted the win? What? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah you one. did. Yeah, you did. Uh, then the Saints have covered the line in four of the last five meetings, and their first meeting at Marvel since 2021. The mm. last, I think it's the last four meetings have been at Optus. So they don't come here as uh, that much the last couple of years, West Coast. So it'll be interesting to see how they go at Marvel. Oscar Allen, two plus. Yeah, you love Oscar Allen, two plus. These bobbleheads there again. Uh, two plus in four of his last five meetings and three plus in his last two games. So we're going to have to call him. If he gets another three plus, it's Oscar Allen, three plus. I would plus. love it be, if he becomes Oscar Allen, yeah. three plus. <laughs> and then, the, and then like it. three weeks after that, he'll be Oscar Allen, four plus. He'll just be going up. Mason Wood as well. He averages 17 disposals and two goals against West Coast. He's also a, massive uh, with Philippou out as well. Mm, and no, that same Max role. King. So yep. Mason Wood, four plus. Let's goals. do it. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Uh, the big question here is, do the Eagles actually get Jared Schofield to win this year? Oh, I doubt let's it. Let's have a look. It's a bit they of a They play North one. again, but that's in... The Harley Madden. Reed Bowl. The Harley Reed Bowl. Whoa, Harley Reed, Bama Lamb. Whoa, Harley Reed, uh, Bama Lamb. The North Melbourne Roos didn't want him. I might take a so sign, they, a Harley Reed sign to that game. What would it say? You uh, dress up as Harley Reed. I, I will pay $8 million a year for Harley Reed. So I do something like But you wouldn't. You hate him. No, I don't like him, actually. Yeah, it's get out of my club. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who are they playing? So they're playing Saints, obviously, this week. Loss. That's a loss. Frio. Loss. They, didn't they win the last dub? Loss. They did, they yeah. Did win the loss. So they, they got loss. a chance in that. Uh, probably a loss. West Coast. Oh, sorry, Gold Coast. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, Gold Coast. Uh, uh, because Gold Coast then had a win away. Suns will win that one. Ooh. Even though it's below the 28. I reckon they got a chance against got a uh, chance. Gold Coast. North, I don't loss. think so. Carlton. Loss. And then no, that's the last one. Interesting. Two Carlton. That, that must be AFRW. It's mixed into the uh, fixture here. I don't think we... No, it mustn't be Carlton. Final round. I think we played... Google's, uh, so trick, Google's tricked me. Anyway. Uh, I don't know if they do. I think I don't yeah, think they're going to get a win. No. It's a tough one. I'm going to go the Saints by 14. I think this is a little bit closer than we expect. The Eagles sort of stick with them, and then the Saints. They might actually get a bit of a scare, and then the Saints just hold on. Yeah, they Ooh. sort of kick away and get you up. Think, you think in the same? Yeah, I think Saints by about eight. West oh. Coast surprised me with being able to stay within reach of uh, Brisbane last well, week. They, they were yeah. really good. Yeah, yeah, that, that, was again, that was at home. But they didn't seem like they were threatening enough to win the game. Yeah. So. Bit Let's, lesser opposition, they could cause a little scare. Also, isn't this so? This is alter, alternating week Saints. So two weeks ago they beat Sydney. Yes, stoked yes. last week, got smashed by Port. So that the dog theory. Yeah, the same as the yeah. dogs. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, there you go. Uh, you're going Saints as well. Stats yeah, well. Saints by thirty. I know oh, that they don't often win by a lot, right. but they. You said they were good last week. They don't. Eagles don't have Waterman, Yo, and Duggan. <laughs> I think have been three of their best players this year. So. That's a real worry, especially Yo. Yo literally sets up all their goals. 78 48. Incredible. Yeah, that's some like that. Yeah. So big one at the MCG on Saturday afternoon. Huge. Hawthorne versus Collingwood. The Hawthorne. The Ginevan. <laughs> the Hawthorne versus the Collingwood. The Hawthorne versus the <laughs> Collingwood Magpies. The Hawks are one and a half point favorites now. Oh, what? This is swinging around. No, that seems fair. Uh, Damn. It is a big game. The Ginevan Bolt, 430, the G. Over under is 166 and a half. You might remember there's a pretty famous match between these two teams at Gather Round. Yes. yes the final you were there. game of the round. I was there on the hill, smashing tins, yep. causing all sorts of havoc, just delighting in the sheer look of terror 
on all the Pies fans' faces oh, that would around That would have been a great me. win if Hawthorne got I might have gotten punched in the back of the head if that had lost <laughs> as well. I'll tell you what. Jeez. Uh, the Hawks, though. Leo, your team. Yep. Offensively, 14th, which feels a bit unders, but, I mean, that also was a really slow start. I feel like with most Hawks things, we should take all their stats from round six, six seven onwards. onwards. Yeah. yeah. As soon as they sort – of... North played them into form, I reckon, that, that week. Since, yeah, sure. since, since you played us, you just dominated since then. Uh, whereas the Pies are seventh on offense and 12th in defense. That's bad. The Collingwood Magpies. The reigning mm. premiers. The defending champs. <laughs> I do love it when people – ah. Oh, They've got to defend the crown. It's like, they don't take away last year. It's <laughs> no, not a wrestling like, belt. Even if they don't make finals, a pass fan, oh, we won last yeah, year. Exactly. We, we still got that over you. Stats boy, give us some stats. Yeah, uh, Hawks have won five of the last eight meetings, which really surprised me. They've got a decent yeah, record. record. Uh, Pies won earlier in the year by five points. That was obviously when Hawks were just really charging back, as you said before. Uh, Pies have only won two of their last seven games, though. They've just that downward spiral. So many injuries and things like that. Uh, Dylan Moore, your man, Leo. He, My favorite player. Your favorite player. Moore. Averages eight in disposal and just under two goals versus the Pies. So he'll be fired up. Of course, he does, mate. Of course, course he, does. he probably averages close to that against every team. And then Josh Dacos, he's hit 20 plus in his last 10 matches. Just a bit of love for Josh. We always talk about Nick. Everyone's like, oh, Nick three votes when he hardly even gets a touch. Josh Dacos, he's just well, he Mr. Might, consistent. He might hardly get a touch this week because yes, Finn McGuinness yes. is back. Oh, he's so back. So has yes, as well. Out go Cam McKenzie and Harvey. Oh, sorry, Harry Morrison. Not to be confused with Harvey Morrison. Or yes. Harvey Harrison, who's also Harvey. out. Watch out. There's no Harvey Morrison. He is. Harvey Harrison's out <laughs> for the pipes. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Hilarious. <laughs> Dan McStay comes in. So does Jeremy Howe and Lockie Sullivan. Not bad. Out goes Lockie Schultz, however. One Lockie in, one Lockie out. <laughs> Those are the rules. And <laughs> Billy F. and Frampton. Is, uh, <laughs> that's what the fans call him. That's what they call him. Uh, <laughs> is out as well for the pies. Those are three pretty, well, two big ins. Obviously, yeah. McStay and Howe are huge for the pies. Uh, but McGinnis comes in to give him the old clamps. You want to use these clamps that I use every freaking day of my freaking Finn McGinnis life? <laughs> yeah, we do. Scriptural's 100th game. But the big question, I guess, is like the Ginnivan Bowl. What do you want to do? Do you want to do the Ginnivan Bowl? Like, does he just like fire up this crowd? How Maybe. big will this game be? Because I think of the it's going to be a Bowl? massive it's crowd. A lot of unknown with it's this gonna be game. Huge. Like, it's going to be huge. And cool. then does Finn McGinnis do a job on Dacos? Because I love, I think I he will. Because the idea he, of that. he's in his head, he's in Dacos' I, head I've, now. My big call is based around that. Oh, um, okay. Well, he knocked him out of the brown low last yeah, year. Broke his leg. Well, that, that was, was that was James Blank, and that was also an accident. But yeah. <laughs> well, tell, Pies, tell Pies fans it was an accident. It was on purpose. Uh, what about uh, is another talking point? Is Darcy Moore? Does he have to have to man up this week and take the big well, defender? Be the big defender the, because Billy Frampton is guarding Chol. So this Chol and Kalshadia. Okay, like, I think this this could be the game that gets him back into form. Well, is he going to fire up this week and then everyone's going to be like, oh, Darcy Moore's good again. They could. <laughs> Marby Hutchol. He's been good this year. I'm just like, what was that movie that had like uh, Wesley Snipes and Jean-Claude Van Damme? Oh, um, you've brought this up before. I can't or remember. like Dennis Rodman and yeah. like Jean-Claude yeah. Van Damme. No like idea. Time I know what you're talking war. about. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, that's... Like they're just like the double team. They, they might have been called double team. Like, they've, awesome. been, they've been very good. Yeah. Like my my Charles being Kalshadir is awesome, and he's fun. To I watch. do. Like two I'm minute very last week. excited about Kalshadir. Charles being good this year, but it's one of the, it's like that like key forward the, pairing. Yeah. Darcy Moore could come back into form. Yeah, maybe. Too. I don't know. We'll see. All right. Any other stats there, stats man? Uh, no, I think we've covered it all. We've got yeah, enough. Should enough we go stats, over? Under, <laughs> should we go over under on Dacos touches? Oh, okay. We'll go. Josh, are we going thirty? Is that the over under or twenty eight? Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Twenty eight and a half. Over? Uh, I'll go under. I'm going to go under too. Finn just tear him up. Clamps. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take the Hawks by 14. I'm going 14. Hawks by three. They just. This is going to be an all-time game. One of the best games of the year. It's going to be 83 to 80, I reckon. Well, I hope you're right, but I think Pies equal this Oh, one. come on. Your favourites for the first time like in 10 weeks later. Come I, on. But just Pies have lost three in a row. Their season is on yeah. the line. They need to stand up in front of a big crowd, and I think they will. All right. It would be a real shame if they lost, though. It would be a real shame. <laughs> Huge shame. Mm. But that, again, this is another one of those eight-point games because these two teams are tied on 36 points. The loser of this has to basically win every game to get to 40 yeah. wins. I think whoever wins this, the f yeah, finals hopes are st still wild and truly alive. Yeah. Or is it, if you lose your If you lose this one, it gets a lot. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're not, pretty you're much not out. out mathematically. No, but, but like, you're probably not going to It gets a very hard, yeah. 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 Saturday night, <laughs> ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. Geelong take on the dogs. Ba, 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 da, ba, da, ba. Keep it going, Jim. Ba, ba, ba. Uh, the over/under for this one's one sixty-eight and a half. The Cats are thirteen and a half point favourites at 
Taxpayer Stadium down there Goomba. in Geelong. GMHBA, 7.30. This is a really fun Saturday night clash. Yeah. It is. I cats love and, that cats and dogs. Is, I love that this is a Saturday night one. I like. I think GMHBA also looks really good. Under At lots. night it does. I've been like, there a couple of times. Like, yeah. <clears throat> to be honest, it also looks good during the day. Like, it's I a nice stadium. Mind, it's a t- just looks good. Looks a lot luscious. of feral fans, but it's very nice. Stadium. Definitely with the uh, stadium uh, upgraded. Yeah, they better. got lots of good food there. Probably need another four and a half mil for another scoreboard, though. <laughs> yeah. uh, the Cats are fourth on offense. The Dogs are fifth. Don't mind that. Defensively, though, the Dogs are seventh and the Cats are twelfth. It's going to hit the over, telling me then. The over under 168.5. Uh, I actually don't mind the over uh, because yeah. the Dogs, I mean, they've had, they were very, very, very good against the Blues last week. Yeah. Uh, kicked away eventually, and that was with the makeshift sort of back line. So if we look at the ins and outs for this yes. one, uh, we have. Big ins for the dogs. The game all over ones. the shop on the AFL site. Just, just Income, shout out <laughs> Adam Trelaw and Aaron Norton. That's pretty big. That is huge. That goes Harley, Harvey Gallagher and the other Garcia. Riley. Out, it, out goes He the was Garcia. the unused sub. In goes so the Garcia. So are both, they're the same person, the yeah. Garcia's. But he was the unused sub last week, Riley Garcia. Weird. They didn't get him on the ground. Oh, that's, that's a bit stiff. Yeah, very Couldn't stiff. Couldn't prove himself. I think he had 40 touches in the VFL the next day too. Oh my God. <laughs> Mitch Nevitt comes in for the Cats. Jai Clark's been dropped. So, uh, which That's is a weird one. Oh, oh, but I mean, it means my beloved Lawson Humphreys and Holly Holly Henry are still there. Uh, you also have the Sean Manor from Heaven. Yep. Name He's been great. going really well. Let's go. Love weeks. me some Shawnee Manor. Uh, stats, boy. Give us some stats. Yeah. Uh, Cats have won 16 of the last 17 home games against the Dogs. Uh, dogs did win there last year, so they'll be yeah, fired up with that. I think was I, I think I was at that it game. It was a yeah. bit of a nothing game. Last round. Last round. Ra- yeah. It was when win for finals. Cats had a lot of outs, right. so... Take that with a grain of sand. The six in, they pretty much smashed grain it. Grain of sand? Grain of salt, that's what I meant to say. Grain of sand. I'll oh, take it with a grain of sand. Yeah, it's the same you're, thing. Yeah, if you're at the beach, that works. Uh, dogs have failed to cover the line. Let's put some <laughs> sand on your, uh, on your, on your food. Uh, yeah, it's, why not? Yeah, it's probably healthier. Uh, dogs have failed to cover the line in six of their last seven after a win. So we were saying about how they never can back it up two weeks in a row. They just don't know how to cover the line in those uh, after a win. I'll pay that. Jezza mm. also doesn't mind going to town on the dogs. Oh, Jezza has 46 goals in just 15 games against the dogs. So that's just Not over three, in a, three a game against the dogs. He loves dominating. Then Bailey Dale, uh, obviously was the sub, was getting dropped at the start of the year. And then Bevo finally came to his Is Bevo a genius? He's Not, dropped him and he's put him into form. Well, I don't know about that. He's had a lot of 30 plus games and then 25 plus in his last five. So he's been really good. Yeah, that was my one of my tab... Uh, Stats for the super coach. Mm. He's like his projections only eighty six. It's like that doesn't take into account he's no. been tearing it up. He's yeah. been getting one ten consistently. Yeah. Uh, so I guess the big question for this one is like, so the dogs get, did get two on the trot uh, three yes. four weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, before they it's lost a horrible though. game to the power, right? And then mm. they came out and beat the Blues. Whatever. Uh, the thing is, one of those two wins on the trot came against. The ruse. And I think they're the buy in between. So I don't know if it that really counts. Yeah. So they've gone win, loss, win, <laughs> win, loss, win, loss, win, yeah, loss. Yeah, round win, 14, loss. around 16. So they had a buy. Yeah. So they skipped their loss. <clears throat> one, lost, one. Yeah. Can they put together two wins? Nope. If I this was at it. Marvel, I would have tipped them. Yeah. Or, or even at. No, I'm not even a then, like I just can't trust them to be consistent. Oh, they're like, so inconsistent. That's just, using using yeah. your line. I can't trust them. Yeah. Can't trust I haven't them. said that in a while, to be <laughs> Flip side, Geelong. GMHBA hasn't been quite the fortress it has been in the past. No, but uh, we no. saw them lose the to Port and the Giants. Giants, they always yes. lose to the Giants. Yes. Giants. Yeah. Uh, was it Freo? I can't remember. I think it was Giants. Uh, this year. Giants definitely. But the f- sort of big question there is like, this is a huge game for the mm. Cats. If they win this, they're in the Catbird seat. That was a good one. Good yeah, one. Cats <laughs> uh, for a top four spot because you're basically sitting there. Sitting pretty with the Blues on 44 points. Yep. Basically tied for second. Dogs also have a really healthy percentage. So if they win this, they're still, they'll be pretty confident to make finals, I reckon. If they yeah, win this. for sure. I'm so still taking the Cats by 23. Ooh. Stats boy? I'm going Cats by nine. I think they match up really well. Geelong won the clearances uh, last week because Collingwood were woeful, but I think the Dogs will still win the clearances. So this will be a bit closer. Cats by nine. Cats no. by 10. I just Ooh. think the Geelong forward line up against that makeshift Dogs back line, you just... Can't really go against that, can you? Yeah. Did it right against the Blues last week, but then Charlie kicked. I think the Blues kind of, yeah, they kind of shot themselves in the foot. That's the, yeah. what's that over there? It's my foot. Bang! <laughs> oh, they went. Uh, Port Adelaide take on Richmond in the second game on Saturday night. 40 and a half point favorites are the power Ooh. at the Adelaide Oval. Over under is 167.5. It feels like the power could do that by themselves if you could trust oh, them. Oh, nah. 
Don't know if this is going to go over the, a, Oh, they'll get 100, man. Maybe. Ninth in offense are the power. The Tigers, 18th. Tigers, 17th on defense. Power, 10th. This is not a great game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> to the point no, where no. I've not even written a big question for this. Oh, like, we've got about – we can come up with a big – something about Ken. Basically, a lot of it's going to come down to this is a big power bounce back because you have to prove that you can – like. I think if they if don't you win smash, this – yeah. you smash Richmond, we're like, okay – you're all right, Fine, mm. but we don't learn much yeah, anyway. Well, what's the yeah. what's the line of like? Obviously, the line's forty here, but what for them to, to for the fans to believe like, that they're good? Yeah, I don't think maybe thirty. Thirty. No, for the fans I'd to believe 80. they're good. Yeah, if, if they win by, but the thing is, they could win by yeah. eighty, and we're just like, you're meant to do that. Yeah. Like, yeah, we're not going to learn a lot from this game. True, true, true. It is a tough one. Thirty. I, mean, I don't. I just don't trust them at all. So yeah, they're, 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 they're so either. annoying. No Dusty again for Richmond. In comes Seth Campbell, Tommy Dow, Caleb Smith. Out goes Nikki Vloston, Tim Taranto, and Jack Graham. That is yeah, pretty rough. Great. Pretty not rough. Great. Where's my Dusty? Dusty? Bring him back. Well, he's got a bung back. Bring him he's back. He's three hundred. I think he's just got to Bali or something. Yeah. Checks out. Uh, for Vegas. the power, Radaglia, Georgiades, Rioli, and Dylan Williams. In out goes Lockie Jones, Kane Farrell. Todd Marshall, bit of friendly fire there. Yeah. And Jeremy Finlayson done for the season. Interesting setup. Uh, Power should win this pretty easily. Stats, we've got some stats for us. Yeah, Power have won the last three meetings comfortably by an average of 24 points. Uh, the Tigers, though, have covered the line in their last four matches against Port at the Adelaide Oval. So Weird. they're really confident there. But, yeah, Rich, this is a whole different Richmond team this year with so many injuries and just been so bad on bottom of the ladder. Yeah. So it's a bit different. George Artis as well. That's a really big in. I was hoping that he was in for Port because he's kicked three plus in the, in well, the last three. he was three. suspended for one week. I forgot, so, I forgot about that actually, yes. So he was <laughs> set out his one week. He sat out his one week. Came uh, back. Yeah, I forgot, I forgot that he actually got suspended. He's kicked three plus in the last three Port home games. So he loves playing there. And then Prestia has had 25 plus in his last four meetings with Port. So Ooh. I think if, yeah, if you're betting on things like that, 25 plus, especially with Taranto out, you lock him in for 20. What if he gets injured? He does like getting injured the meatball. He does yeah. like getting injured. What is he doing? <laughs> that is a strange setup. Uh, the the Georgiades three plus. I've been all over yeah, that. Yeah, at like, home especially. Yeah, like chicken on rice. Like, Four it's plus. Just, I back him against. He's awesome. As well. I love mm. me some Georgiades. Uh, yeah, the big question is like, really, what is what could you even learn from a smashing from power? Of, like, to be honest, I just want them to look slick yep. and good and put him to the sword. Like guys other than Rose and Butters, fire up. Could just be a bit of team bonding. Mm. <laughs> For Ken, this Ken, a smile on Ken's face. I've got oh, Port by 40, that. which is actually where the line is. I just oh, realized that. Uh, Leah? Port by 31. Nice. Stats boy? 27. That's Richmond, a... know how to hang in Richmond games. by 27. No, 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 no. no. Port by 27. Thank if you. you are going to have overlapping games, you, like this one's not a bad one to have overlapping, but still, like just start it a half hour later. Like yeah, what are we you doing? You can end on that game. Just like we'll Gary, half time ago, oh, yeah, they're getting killed. I'll sit here and watch this and then I'll go back <laughs> to the cats and dogs. Yeah. Uh, that is 7.30. Like what are we doing? Why is that at 7.30? At, at, it could have been seven. So angry. <laughs> There's a half hour time difference. It still starts at seven thirty over there. What are you doing, you morons? Anyway, Sunday, another massive. This one is actually probably the biggest game of the round. Yes. Yes. Despite cats and dogs being a good one, hawks and pies being a good one. Uh, Brisbane versus Sydney. Alex is going to be there. The yeah. Swans, a half point favorite. Wow. At the wow. Gavitois. Since uh, I just checked on. Uh, some of the companies. Ooh. Minus two and a half Brisbane favourites since it's Charlie Cameron. the Cam line. It has, three points. Since Charlie Cameron has been back in the side, I was like, I better Shock check that. Shock face. Yeah. <laughs> Shock. Three the, points. Is that how we're doing it now? Just emojis? Just, yeah, it's a <laughs> shock face. Shrug Live man, emotion. Man talking. <laughs> yeah. Cry laughing. <laughs> uh, I've got redhead emojis now, so that's good. Hey, racist. <laughs> they do. <laughs> uh, 179.5 is the over. I, I found that very interesting. 179. Like, mm -hmm. do you trust, like, Brisbane at home, we've seen that free-flowing offense a lot of the times. The Swans, they this is like the weird thing for me is that this is a day game, like one ten. I on like Sunday. it, but I love that this it's is a massive good. random like yeah. big day game. But do you think that lends itself to an over or an under? That's my question. Uh, the day games, especially up there, it's not as over. greasy, so I'd yeah. be saying over. But that's a really really high over for what is it? The Swans are number one. In, they're only allowing seventy two points a game. I still think Brisbane should get at least 90. I'm, I'm going under. This, I think I'm going stats, under. stats, like yeah. the offense and defense stats, it should hit the under. Yeah, that's what I think yeah. because both teams are really strong defensively, obviously both really strong offensively, but I think I'm going the under. So last two matchups, Brisbane won 97-81. Okay. Prior to that, 113-89. So both going prior up, to that, 125-94. 
So Four, okay. They've only played once in the last, like each year, the last three years, though. Yeah. So it's not a common matchup, is Brisbane City, no, which is no. weird. Good um, kit matchup. It is a great kit yeah. matchup. And this is a great Sunday kit matchup, a Sunday day game kit <laughs> matchup. Yeah. You expect Drew Morford on the call. You've got Brisbane Bears. Sandy around. Roberts. I love this. Sandy Roberts, <laughs> always, oh, yeah. Sunday specialist. Love yes. that. Uh, any other stats there, stats man? Yeah, you said it was a day game. Lions have actually won 21 of the last 22 day games at the Gabba. I think that stat is a bit skewed because usually they play crap teams during the day and the really good teams at night, but still they've got a really good record during the day. And they've also won the last five meetings against the Swans, Ooh. which uh, surprised me a little bit. Sydney are one and five in their last six at the Gabba. So they don't like traveling there, even though they've had really good record. record the last also. five at the Gabba? Uh, I might have had to say that. In 2021. Yes. Sydney. Yes, Peter. sorry, it must have been at the Gabba, yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, stats going Yeah, all right, I've had 20 other ones. So this one's first in offense and defense. Yes. Yeah. Prime candidates for being the best team in 150 years. Well, we no. Yeah. Hater. Why are you such a hater? Why do you hate the Swans? I can't stand Just because of Alex. I used to like the Swans, and then Alex is on the show. <laughs> he has, like that, he has that effect on people. <laughs> uh, Brisbane, offense third. Defense sixth. Still very good. Chucky Cameron sticks around. Happy days there. Your ins and outs for this game. Extended bench, Brandon Stasevic. Not bad. Mm -hmm. My favorite, though, Devin Robertson. Why is he your favorite? The rig. He's oh, got he's the rig out for Yeah, boys. he's going to take Henry shirt Smith. Off uh, out for the Swans, obviously. Justin McInerney goes out. Callum Mills has been managed. So he gets his one, one week run. That is weird. And our weird. friend of the program, oh. James Robottom, is out injured. Cheeks is out. My good mate, Cheeks. Damn it. Is out injured. This stinks. Uh, Harry Send Cunningham. Him a message just to, just to I'll let him know. Just like, we still love you, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Harry Cunningham comes in for his 200th get. Well, he's in, plays his 200th, which yep. is very cool. Isaac, the Heen Man Heaney comes in, obviously. Corey Warner, the lesser Warner, the yeah. Harvey Grant, the uh, <laughs> yeah. the Michael B. Jordan. The Josh Dacos. The Josh Dacos. No, no, that's Caleb Josh. Mitchell, Aaron Francis, and Sam Reed on the extended bench as well. This is a fascinating setup. The big question is, is the Gabbertois back? Is it? No. no. They have been horrible there this yeah, year. This is the worst been. they've been at the Gabba in, I'd say, five or six years. So, I yeah, I can't agree with that. I, if they win, then you could go, all right, they've, they've been a good team there. But still, their record this year has been... They Important. eked by against Melbourne. Yeah, only recently, and that was a yeah. that was a very worse. Well, they only game. eked by Adelaide, like two, exactly, <laughs> like yeah, two weeks ago. yeah, and Adelaide. So, uh, no, nah, it definitely isn't back. No way. So, this is the sort of setup. I trust Sydney more than I trust Brisbane. Yep, yep. And like Brisbane, if they win, I'll start trusting them more. It's not quite chicken won, and the egg, but is it six but, in a row they've won now? They've looked awesome. Yeah, yes. they, at least yes. they look back and back close to their best, but they're not anywhere near their best. But yet. the teams that they've beaten, so they beat West Coast last week. Yeah. Just, they just beat Adelaide. Yeah, it was a bit, bit of a worry. They just beat Melbourne. Mm. They smashed Port. That's fine. They beat St Kilda at home at the Gabba, and they beat the Dogs. So that's one that or two, game. one or two finals teams really in that six game run. So that's interesting. Prior to that, remember mm. they lost to the Hawks. So just say yeah, I do remember that. You guys always, you guys always beat Brisbane. I'm taking Sydney by four. Sydney by four. I'm going Sydney by three goals. I think they're. Uh, that that should be the line, I reckon. Not Brisbane should not be favourites in this one. Yeah, I think Swans by four goals. I just yeah, can't. I don't know. It's just something about the lines. They just seem a little at home. Off. Yeah. yeah, average. Even though they've won six, they just but they see spurts some... of their great football, and yeah. then you just I don't know. They can't really put like West Coast away, for instance. Yep. So, yeah, I'll give you some names. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who do you trust? So on the road for Sydney, yep. you're, you go to the Gabba. Who's kicking their goals, do you think? Is this a Logan McDonald game? Is this a Chad Warner, er Woe Errol, like the midfield? Hey, we've all just woken up and kicked all the goals like we did in that random game against, like, what was it, Essendon or whatever. Uh, Marty's fallen asleep since he kicked nine, so I'm not yep. trusting him. Will Haywood uh, pops up, Will kicks Haywood. two. Will Haywood, maybe, yeah, this could be. This I, I think it's Papley. This is a Will Haywood legacy game. I think I'm going Papley. I think the, the bigs for Brisbane are always really good, especially at the Gabba, so Papley could get off the uh, chain a bit and get a few crumbing goals. Marty and Haywood. Mm. Flip side against the Swans defense, Hipwood, Danaher, and of course Chucky. Who do you think wins that battle? Like, can one of those pop off? Because um, we've seen basically Hipwood, Danaher, like exchange mm. popping off. Danaher's uh, not got a great record against Sydney. I had a look. I think it's like ten goals in eight games. So like, that's okay, but it's definitely lower than his other games. So uh, Lucky Neil get tagged? Does he get the James Jordan experience? I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that all. Or Zorko. I think Dunkley's going to have a huge one. Because if yes, Lucky Neil gets tagged, then... I think Kai Lyman could sneak a couple as well. Mm. This game's going to be awesome. Yeah. I cannot wait. And we'll have live uh, insight, I believe, from Alex. Yes. So. 
Middle Sunday game. Frio, <laughs> Melbourne. Wow, this one's going to be a barn burner out west. 15 and a half point favourites are the Dockers at Optus Stadium. 3.20 p.m. on Sunday. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, 154.5 is the over-under. Now, Frio nearly hit that by themselves <laughs> Alice know. when they was ridiculous. smashed the Demons. It was like that was just like six weeks ago. I know. Ago, yeah. 92, I think it was. A 92 oh, point geez. win that was. Absolute chaos Crazy. gear. Uh, what was the final score on that game, actually? Uh, I've already made the joke. One four one forty nine. Yes, yes, correct. How the hell did you remember that? I, I read that before. Mate. Just Rain Man numbers. over there. Rain Man, yeah. Footy yeah. <laughs> numbers. Footy numbers, yeah. <laughs> One forty one forty nine. That was absolutely absurd, Leo. Uh, <laughs> so the one fifty four point five at Optus Stadium. This Frio team, God, they make it hard to trust them. I know. At like, home though, they're good. At home though, they'll <laughs> smash Melbourne, I think. And I just, it's hard to sort of see this Demons team going. Well, we got that one without Truck mm. and Gorn. And what are they going to do now with? I'll tell you what. Jack Billings is oh, yeah, back. The team, sure. <laughs> Adam Tomlinson, <laughs> sure. Bailey Laurie, and Tom Fullerton. They've actually gone for a big. Uh, and oh, Taj yeah, Woden well, goes out. Extended benches, of course. Josh Drape is out for the Dockers. Tough one for uh, Alex. Alex mm. Pierce is back, though. Sean Darcy is back. Brandon Walker and Will Brody. There's some good ins, yeah. Uh, Will Brody named on the bench, but obviously Sean Darcy straight back in. Alex Pierce straight back in as well. It's... I don't know if Fullerton will play. They they didn't even. Oh, maybe because it's against Darcy and Darcy Jackson. They and might just Jackson. bring him in just in case because of the two big guys. It's an interesting one. All right, stats boy, give us some stats. Yeah, Frio have won their last ten home matches against the D's. Uh, obviously, that last one, ninety two points, that was away, but they just absolutely dominated them. Melbourne though have covered the line in fifteen of their last seventeen matches as underdog. And when they are underdog, Clary has had uh, twenty five plus disposals. Last twelve matches as an underdog. So they, yeah, like last week though, were, were they a fair fair big. Chunk of them were underdogs, so that really surprised me. Jai Miss as well. We've, we love talking up Jai Miss. He's got four goals, three goals in his last two games against Melbourne. So he, um, and he's finally kicking accurately. Well, he kicked one three last week. He oh, missed, I thought it was yeah, the no. pick of the week before. He then, yeah. missed um, he missed some gettable shots. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. He's he's got the little stutter going yeah. sometimes. I thought he was normally when he put, an accurate kick. Well, so you're trying to tell me that there's something he never a misses a miss. Yes, I there is. It up. <laughs> yeah, you really did. Yeah. He sometimes a misses. Yeah, <laughs> you missed that joke. Uh, <laughs> The big question for me is, will the D show up? Or is this um, last week was the last gasp? Oh, we'll show them, boys, kind of vibe in that awesome win against yeah. the Dons. I know, it's an interesting one. What do you They've reckon? got some good wet weather players, as you mentioned yeah. before. Is it going to be wet? No, very rarely is it wet at Optus Stadium. Uh, I can have a look at I that just, for you. Yeah, I feel like they've just sort of left it all out on the field last week. Mm. I think this is the tank. inevitable yeah. come down they get. It's going to be smoky. windy, apparently. Windy. <laughs> Who does that suit? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Probably Frio because they're used to It's always windy. It's always with the Frio doctor. The yeah. the Frio what they name for? <laughs> yeah, but it's not. The Optus Stadium's not in Frio, but yeah, that's, that's a different. I know. doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm still taking Frio by 32. I just don't trust the Demons at all. Mm. I think last week was really cool, but it was very unexpected. Yes. And I think the way they beat the, yeah. uh, the Bombers, it was just... It was such a backs against the wall, truck and gone out. Yeah. Who's going to stand up kind of vibes. This is a lot tougher flying all the way out west against a Frio team that's just smarting from a Hawthorne loss. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to take Frio by if, if over they can, five goals. If they can do it again, though, Melbourne, then the whole season well, can go just and get changes. back in the side when they make finals. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> well Frio, like, the, you're right because Melbourne, if they this a lot of their well, right. a lot of their finals hopes and dreams probably hinge a lot on this. Yep. Until the next two weeks. Mm, mm. They lose this, they're back behind the pack, they're back out of the eight. Crazy. If Frio win, they're back probably in the top four. If uh, Brisbane lose, yep. and if Carlton yeah. or the Cats lose as well. Yep. Chaos. Who knows what happens, but that's the best part about this time of year and basically this season as well. Stats boy, who are you taking? Uh, I'm going Frio by 25. They'll be fired up. They shouldn't have lost to the Hawks. They'll be fired up from that plane where they didn't have any water. The, the, I was going to say Maybe something. They're still, dehydrated. They're still <laughs> peeing in basins. They're like, what are we doing, AFL? We're going to show you. We're going to be back in the top Maybe four. they'll pee in every basin from here on out. <laughs> yeah, ma maybe. That's just their lucky charm. It's their way of life. Yeah, maybe. Frio I was by going 25. to ask Stats boy if he's ever peed in a basin. I'm like, he's way too short. Like, he'd have to be like. Wait, oh, yeah. I've got, I got a good stream on me. I reckon, so I, reckon I could. He's yeah. like aiming for the roof. <laughs> Let's stream one. Just drop it in a bucket. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 3.0, yeah. I'm good from 3.0. All right, Leo, I don't, I'm not, not enough of me. Oh, yeah, you're <laughs> I'm you're hosting now. Yeah. Three of my 17. I think they'll get the job done. Yeah. Just like stats boy in a basin. All right, <laughs> and finally, the last game of the round, Carlton oh. taking on the North Melbourne Blockbuster Kangaroos. Blockbuster, Jim, me versus you. Get a little fight. Fight stands going. 
guy. Oh, yeah, one of those classic boxer ones. Like, yeah. Oh, versus. I'm, very, oh, oh, versus. I'm, going, I'm trying not to laugh. 37 and a half point favorites are the Blues at Marvel, 4.40 p.m. And on Sunday, 183.5 is the over-under on this that one. That is very big. Oh, my God. I, is it, though? I mean, they've had a couple of these games between the two of them. 137.81 earlier this year. Oh, okay, fair enough. 107.84 <laughs> last year. 114.64 last – they – 164.118. The snorth ball. Is just – yeah. Under, but the last two have gone over that line. So, mm. and then you think that Carlton were the second ranked offense in the competition at ninety nine point two points a game, up against the eighteenth ranked North defense might pose a bit of a problem. The fifteenth, yeah, versus eighteenth defense is mm. just pretty shit. The fact that Carlton are fifteenth in defense is, is so bad. But they're second, and they 15th. they just go. Oh, he's going to score one hundred twenty. So yeah, they they were thirteenth, fourteenth the last three weeks. They just keep going. Well, down. Cats are fourteen. Yeah, uh, 12th, 12th. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, the Blues have given up just consistently enough 100 points, bad 100-point yeah. yeah. games. 90 to 100, like, well, they always, they always can like see that. Basically, because they're like, we'll try to outscore you. Check this out. And sometimes it's working, sometimes. More often than like, not. Last, it works, Last exactly. couple of times it hasn't. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but they are propped up, I think, in the last couple of weeks by holding Richmond to 70 points, right? Yes. And yeah. it should actually be a lot worse. Um, but before that, like they held Essen to 70, Geelong to 75. Okay, it's not as so, that, that's not that bad. But the GW, like on the road in GWS, that sucked, giving up 116 and just being blown out of the water after the first quarter. Yeah, Basically, their up. last seven quarters have stunk. Mm. And so this is the, hopefully, fingers crossed, get right game. Against Surely, North. yeah. The same way it was for Sydney, where they lost two in the trot. We're just getting the good teams back into form, aren't yeah. we? got the Hawks into form. we got Sydney, Sydney back into team. form. Thank you. So a, give us some stats, stats, man. Oh, I don't like talking about stats with North Melbourne. I will anyway. Uh, North have <laughs> lost last 23 matches against Victorian teams. Just woeful. Oh, my God. Lost the last three, three to the Blues by an average of 40 points. Uh, Carlton's last eight matches have gone over the total points, as we mentioned. Yep. Really good offense, really crap defense. So you're going to go over. Even though it's 183, you're going to go over. In this one, Kerno, he averages 15 disposals and two and a half goals against North. McCurcher has also had 30 plus in, he, in four of his last five. So he's been really good. He, he, him at Marvel is so exciting to watch. He's going to take mm -hmm. a lot of bounces. Lake but this is going to be an absolute smashing, I think. So in for the Blues, Jesse Motlock, my good friend. Uh, George Hewitt, <laughs> Dave Cunningham, Jack Carroll, Sam Durden. Uh, that is the extended bench, and they've named like three small forwards. So that's a lot. Uh, Brody <laughs> Kemp is out, dropped after a pretty rough last couple of weeks. Zach Williams is obviously out injured as well. The weird thing for me there is that Jack Martin did not come straight in for Zach no, Williams. No, that's so a they weird did one. name mm. Durden and Motlop maybe in that spot in place of uh, Zach Williams. Uh, Jack Martin obviously recovering from a calf injury. Martin, so. he didn't play full VFL last week. Yeah, so maybe so they want him to just yeah, give him another week. week or two. Uh, the interesting one for me is that they've named Tom DeConing as the uh, primary ruckman, but Pitto is still on the team. So mm. I wonder if he does on the mm. extended bench just slip off. Yeah, he is um, on that extended bench. Oh, we got some big. Oh, sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. And then north. for the ruse, <laughs> Zach <laughs> Fisher. <laughs> <Not> Revenge! <laughs> Jaden Stevens. Sleevo! Jaden Stevenson, Griffin Logue, Will Phillips. Who's he going to give the clamps to? Uh, pool, Sam, Walsh. Sam Walsh probably yeah, yeah Robert that's Hansen a, yeah Robert Hansen Jr. I'm excited by Griffin Logue is a huge in just another big body I think he's a very good player Curtis Taylor dropped is a joke Jaden Stevenson should be dropped from our club so the fact that oh, the boy, fact that right. uh, they <laughs> dropped Curtis Taylor, not coming on the show Jaden apparently. Stevenson he doesn't wear his sleeves every week now I don't know what he's doing he's lost his powers he that, he's lost he his wants. powers he forgot how to play footy Curtis Taylor dropped is horrible but I'm happy that uh, Will Phillips is back Isn't Taylor the sub he was but I, I think he's a very good player anyway I am slightly worried about the size of the Carlton back line against the size of the Ruse forward line. Like, mm. even Tickle, like He's they, been really good. He yeah. was awesome mm. last week. Like, yeah. Zerha's obviously, like, very up and about. Same with Paul Curtis, and you got the big Suva in the middle. Whereas Carlton at the moment are basically rolling with Weeders as the big tall, and there's very little else because mm. it's Marchbank, Newman, Chincotta, Cow, and, like, that's yep. not a big back line at all. When McGovern's no, not Marsh there. Marshbank's pretty big. Maybe that's why Durden has to play. <laughs> nice. Nice one. <laughs> well, <laughs> Tough scenes. <later>. Uh, <laughs> he might have to. He might. Either way, it's pretty weird, pretty gross. How many does Charlie quick kick? Quick, how many does quick, he kick? Quick, seven he... goals, nine behind. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon, to be honest. You know, 16, <laughs> 16 <laughs> shots, I'll, I'll be walking out crying. I don't want, Jesus. I think if you flip out not. and reverse it from last week, 7-3. He's not, not that accurate. Bit. I'm going to say 5-4. Five, 5-4. Four. Five, four. Well, not bad. Because he's going to kick a lot of points still. <laughs> Is that our big call? 
Any other that's stats? That's not a big call. He's playing against North Melbourne. Ah, uh, no. That's enough stats, I think. I don't okay. want to talk about North Melbourne. I'm going to go the Blues <laughs> by six goals. 36 points. 36? Nice. I reckon Blues just under five goals. Ooh, I'm going to go Blues by 39. They just cover that line. And yeah, second half, they'll dominate. Nice one. It is a tricky, interesting, weird one, especially late in the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> you just like, Carlton just win. Yeah. Wish, please. I'll, please I'll hope not, win. but they will. All right, let's do a big call for round 19. I said last week that the Dogs would beat the Blues and then the Blues would run the table. I then <laughs> talked myself out of the Dogs call because I'm a moron. Uh, <laughs> so I changed my mind, which is very, uh, that's annoying. So I called it last week. Blues hopefully just keep running the table. Just I want to keep that one on there just so they stick with it. My two here are Luke Jackson, boots four, in a bit of revenge yeah, like against that. the Demons. Zach Fisher gets 25-plus disposals. Revenge! <laughs> it's revenge week. And North win. And then oh. the Eagles also <laughs> scare the pants off the Saints and big yep. questions start getting asked about Ross Lyon. Nice. He's just putting in well, more. If they win, I don't think you'll have big questions. He's just putting in more big calls each week to try and get one. We, we, yeah, we, need, we all need to get a big, big call for <laughs> every game. Yeah. Big call stats boy. Uh, Jezza, he loves playing the dogs, as I said before. I think he'll do a bit of everything. Four goals, 20 disposals, and four clearances. Four clearances. Yep. Yep. He's good because they, they, every now and then they put him in the middle just for a bit of crash and bash, like they did with Tom Stewart lately. He's going to go in the middle, four clearances, career it's very high. Very hard to get a clearance. He's, he's had three uh, clearances his career high. He's going to get four. He's going to have 20 disposals Ooh. and he's going to kick four goals. So big, big game big from goal. Jezza. Yeah. I think we're going too big with the big ones. <laughs> no, that's all right. Speaking of revenge, Jim, Nick Dacos revenge game. Oh, so what are you let's, doing? Let's discount the Adelaide game. What was that? Why are they playing in Adelaide? Last year, <laughs> Why are they playing? Last year, five disposals against Finn McGuinness. McGuinness killed him. Hawks won. Well, yeah, he got injured. Yeah. Well, they destroyed him for three quarters. Yeah, true. This will be Dacos' comeback. I reckon Ooh. 30 disposals and two goals. <laughs> and I think that'll get the pies over. McGuinness gets subbed out? No, he won't get subbed <laughs> out, but... He might change roles a few. And okay. Pies, Pies players will be more alert to the tag because they didn't seem alert to it last time. Yep. Nice one. I like that. You're very negative towards your horse. It's not though. negative. It's a big call. It's a big call. Yeah. I like it. We could still win and he has 30 and Okay. Two. Fair, fair call. Round 19. What are we keeping an eye on in this round? Revenge. We're keeping an eye on <laughs> There's a revenge. common theme here. He loves revenge. revenge. He talks revenge. about revenge on Supercoach all the time There's as well. so much revenge. I love revenge. <laughs> Just, if you cross me, yeah. revenge. Al's just like, oh, I don't want to. <laughs> Adelaide, Essendon, that is a revenge game. The Sam Draper Bowl. Yep. This yep. is also like Adelaide did also really give the Bombers a run for their money last year when they played at Marvel. It was 115.97 in the end, but you might remember that Adelaide, I think, were leading early on in yeah. that one, and it was a chaotic game. And obviously the one earlier this season, you've got the Ginevan Bowl. You got the Draper Bowl. You got all these bowls going. You got Zach, Fi the Zach Fisher Bowl. But said no one ever. <laughs> can't wait. That's going to be awesome. But you've got all this revenge sort of stuff floating around. I want to keep an eye on that because just weird stuff happens. It feels like I think we've all tipped the exact same teams to win this week, and that is we? not going to work out. Oh, like, you tip Collingwood other than that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, mate, put a mocker on the pie. How so have we all done go. except for one game? That's wild. Outside of that, the Lions, are they for real, for real, for real? If they can win this, if they beat the Swans, they can make back-to-back -back grand finals from here. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Well, it solidifies them yeah. as a genuine contender. Mm, they okay. are the genuine yeah, but they can't win in, in Melbourne, so not happening. Still? Yeah. If Frio can reassert its defensive dominance against their bunny team, the Demons, you'd yeah, love to see that. It'd be interesting to see if they can come out and get, lay the smack down. The Sun's on the road. This Just is out keep, every week, yeah. Every week. If the Suns are on the road, keep an eye on them because weird stuff's going to happen in that game. What are they going to look like? The fight of the dogs. Mm. I like this. A bit of dogs fight. <laughs> How much fight are we going to see in the dogs? That's that's a different game that you're betting on. Maybe. Dog fighting. 20 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> but on the road, GMHBA. Like, so much of their season will probably come down to this game. Yep. Like, if you can go down there and beat the Cats, They'll that's be fired up. huge mm. for the dogs. Yep. And it sort of basically quietens a lot of the questions that will inevitably yeah. arise. Then they'll lose they to someone bad next Carlton time. and then the Cats in back-to-back mm. -back weeks. That's massive. And then finally, obviously, the Ginny Cup, the Pies-Hawks game. I want to keep an eye on the crowd number. Yeah. I think it's going to be a big crowd. I think yeah. it's going to be huge. Mm. I'm that's very good. intrigued just by, like, there. the atmosphere, not just around the crowd, but boos. just, like, on the – like. In the game, like what's going on? Like I don't know. I feel like there's going to be a lot happening. There will be. He's up and about. He's giddy. Look at him. Yeah, I'm giddy. <laughs> giddy. He's, like, he's Josh Giddy. Giddy. Uh, they were hanging out at that Boomers game against China as well. What Giddy and Giddy? Giddy and Giddy. What a oh, combo. I thought he was talking about me and Giddy. Yeah. Uh, when? <laughs> those are some big oh, things to keep an eye on. So, Supercoach thoughts vibes. Hmm. There is some weird Supercoach games this week, and the vice captain, captain loopholing. 
uh, is a little bit wonky. So here's some projections for you. Bond, 130. Ooh, Whoa, Errol. I like that. He might go away. Score 142. <laughs> uh, Butters at 136. Lockie Neal on his way to a third Brownlow, 134. <laughs> oh, 128 for Isaac Heenman. Heaney. Tom Green is projected at 128, uh, 123 is at it? home oh, against yeah. the Suns, which I actually don't mind because you've got that just no... They don't play defense. Just They're absolute, wide. like, what is it, uh... Bruce free footy yep. the Suns on the road especially. You're at home. I don't mind him as a left field vice captain on your Saturday afternoon early that, game. That's what I'm doing for vice captain. He can only go up from 40% efficiency. Surely. Surely. 40%. That's what he was. That's why. Oh, so he had 37, 37 touches, touches last 93 week. super coach points. That is, oh so if he gets 37 touches again this week, he's going to eclipse rough. that 120, 130. But if so. you have Zach Merritt, I think he is a lock in one. for your VC on mm-hmm. Friday night against the Crom. He's at 126, yep. I think, is projected for him. Um, but he could easily go massive mm. against that Crows midfield, which I don't think is that wildly defensively inclined at all. And I think Zeret's record at Marvel is quite outstanding as well. Yeah. Um, but I'm still at a bit of a loss. We talked this out on the Supercoach show, you and I, Stats Boy, on yep. Monday yep. with Al. And it is a bit of a tricky one this week, right? Like, who are you going to go with, Leo? What are you What are you vibing on? Oh, uh, the Tom Green, you've kind of convinced me there. Oh. Um, but also Nick Martin as a left field yeah, chair tomorrow yep. night. I don't mind. Under the roof. Um, with 142 Martin. last week. Yeah, yeah. I'm surprised he actually kicked it that well in uh, wet weather because he can't kick it well in dry weather. <laughs> no, but, uh, so maybe he's going to be bad this week. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. Wet weather specialist question mark? <laughs> yeah. I think uh, Bont as well is just a Bont. safe pick Saturday night against the Cats. Yep. And I think he's gone for 30 plus touches each of his last two against the Cats. Yeah. Let's have if a you want to play it safe, I think you've got to go Bont. I think I'm going to go Tom Green, the VC early Saturday Arvo, maybe into Butters Saturday night. Ooh, oh, yeah, I'm going to go Tom Green into Bont. I just had a look. 141 and 146, his last two against the Cats. It's not bad. <laughs> not bad at all. Yeah. Uh, have you made any trades this week? Brought in Luke Jackson. So oh, okay. uh, I know everyone had him. Probably 10 weeks ago, but I finally just so needed, was needed me, an extra me with Heaney. It was either Jackson or Kerner. Nice. And I yeah. don't trust Kerner after this week. Well, okay. even with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After this week. After this week. Sure. Uh, without Gorn named, I'm still rolling with the wildly <laughs> unique Luke Jackson, Ned Moyle. Uh, the only one to have Luke Jackson, Ned Moyle as his draft. Mind it's good. Yeah. yeah. I don't trust. I'm, 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 I'm not as stoked when Moyle gets like 56 this week at GWS, <laughs> but we'll no, see. No, he'll happens. go well. Either way, Supercoach is going to be pretty chaotic this week. So. This is where the rubber hits the road in your leagues, uh, stuff yep. like that. So keep an Could eye on it. Did you come up with a captain? What was yours in the end? Uh, Bob. Bob. Yeah, Bob. Nice. He loves playing the cats. All right. Good. There you go. That's it for the <laughs> AFL Good. Today Teams Thursday show. That was a fun one. Lots of teams, lots of stuff to talk <laughs> out. Lots of peeing into basins <laughs> yeah, stuff. All too right. much of that. Uh, that is it for the AFL Today show for this week, though. We'll be back on Sunday night, though, to wrap up all of the Round 19 action including probably the live ladder, which will just be one more headache as we look at it going, oh, my God, what is going on? <laughs> but either way, thanks to Social Guy Leo. Thanks, Jim. Thank you to Stats Boy. Thank you. Four foot two and an attitude. All right, remember to smash a like across all the socials, see us doing lots of fun stuff. This week was particularly fun. Uh, get around all of the shows that we do as well. What is it, the Cricket Today podcast with these ding guy? The yep, Football Today right. podcast with... These ding guy. Uh, NBA Australia with this idiot. And uh, NFL Australia as well as hold all tickets. All the good stuff. Subscribe, star, and like all of your shows across your podcast app, YouTube, all that good stuff. Get around them like the crew on the flight trying to, like, waffle stomp a Sean Darcy <laughs> log in the dunnies. Jeez. Just, that would be brutal. Just uh, That is – I don't get paid I didn't sign up for this. <laughs> I'm just an air hostess. Well, that's the best part. Well, the, not the best part. The, that, <laughs> that's how this story came to light, right? Because, like, the uh, airport workers' union – Oh. Arked up and went, yo, that was the worst. Yeah. <laughs> Let's, oh, yeah, it was. What, it was. what is going on? Mm. So. Either way, that's it. We'll catch you on Sunday night for the AFL Today Show's Wrap Around 19. Until then, look after yourselves. Go Blues and footy's back. If you like this show, make sure you check out all the other shows in the Sports Today Network, from the AFL Today Show to the Cricket Today Podcast, the Football Today Podcast, as well as NBA Australia and NFL Australia. With Sports Today, your sporting needs have never been easier to cover.